Room. I'm on Emisi Adaba. Thanks for joining in. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for being there. You're doing okay. You're doing good. I know you are. Yes, indeed. You aren't. All right, just stay with us and um, somehow, some way, you've got to get your groove back. Yeah? All right, so me? I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm all right. Yeah, just a regular work and, you know, um, sun up to sundown, just trying to make sense of the day and uh, living your dreams and. You know, one thing or the other. But I'm all right. I'm fine. Thanks for asking. All right. So today I am going to be talking on another sensitive topic, sensitive subject. We've talked about it before, but we're taking a different angle right now. It centers around, you know, women and children, you know, abuse and uh, violence and all of that. That's what we're going to be talking about. It's quite rampant. It's um, the figures are on the rise. You know, um, homes are becoming scary places. You know, home is meant to be your safe house, your safe place, where you go and you're, you're, you're relaxed, you're cool, you're calm. It's been a crazy day out there and you're home to just breathe and be yourself and, and be in the loving arms of, of a father, a mother, or your children and all of that. But these days, homes are far from that. So much so that we're beginning to have safe houses outside the home. I'm telling you, we're going to be talking about that as it affects us men, as it plays out on women, as it plays out on children, sexual abuse, um, domestic violence, all on the rise. You remember last week we did a whole lot on, um, on suicide, right? You know, that too could be part of it, but we're zeroing in on, on, um, on that right now. And I've got two fantastic people, two great guests in the house, and we're just going to be chit-chatting and talking on the reality that plagues us, and more importantly, how to deal with it, how to contain it, how to stop it. That's what we're going to be doing tonight in the men's room. The lines are going to be popped open later on at the second half of the show, so you can call in and chip in, you know, what you want to say and how you want to say what you want to say. If you've got a story, feel free to share your story right here in the men's room. Once again, I'm Oni Misi Adaba. I'll take a quick break, and when I come back, I'll let you in on who I have in the house and where we're headed. Stay with us. Now, uh, before we went on break, I talked a whole lot on the fact that uh, we're going to be talking um, on something that is centered around women, children, as it plays out on the man, you know, that has resulted to homes right now not being as safe as they should be. You know, domestic violence is on the rise, sexual abuse is on the rise, craziness going on in the house, you know, in-laws or other relatives are just, just taking advantage and, and the men taking advantage of, of the women, of the children and all of that. And homes right now are not as safe as they should be. The reason why there is what we call the WARIF, uh -huh. Women at Risk International Foundation, a fantastic foundation that provides a safe house for people who, um, the survivors actually, survivors of raped and sexual abuse, you know, victims of people who have just gone through a whole lot of that. That's a safe house. Should that be? Well, if I say no, it will be putting her out of, um, I wouldn't want to say business now, but then it'll be putting that out but she's been able to bring this out to provide a safe haven for you the abused you the survivor and we're going to be talking about you today and we're going to be talking about the perpetrator you know and more so we're going to be talking on solutions yeah so this lady runs it she goes by the name dr kemi da silva Ibu. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. It's been forever trying to get you in here. All right, let's do next week. Okay, let's do next week. All right, let's try next week. You know, <laughs> finally, finally, today, today, what's today? That's it, right? And here we are. And here we are. On the 30th. Good to have you here. Very, very happy to be here. <laughs> and then I have another friend, Suleiman Shahibu. He's, a, he's an IT specialist. He's a speaker. He's gone through all of the leadership courses um, courtesy of John Maxwell, and he's big on family, big on men, um, just calling us men to order. And I thought to bring him here for us to chat on this very sensitive, very topical, very important issue. And we're just going to have a conversation around this. Hey, Suleiman, thanks for coming. Hey, Onimisi, thanks. Thanks for having me. Your first time in a radio station? Yeah? Yes, my first time. What do you think? Well, great experience. <laughs> nice to have people around me here. It's good your voice is like that. I mean, you're not yes. all tensed and all... No, before, before I left home, I, I told my... You my, prepped yourself up. No, I told my wife and my son, watch out. <laughs> and I'm sure they're listening now. <laughs> well, 
He's a speaker, and I guess he'll be speaking like crazy today. All right, and so like I said, I'm Onimisi Adaba, and this is what going to be what we're going to be doing. So um, the lines are going to be popped open later on. Uh, so feel free to share your thoughts and call. And if you've got a story you want to share, experience by all means. We all heal here. I'll tell you this. You know, last week, shortly after the show. Um, the studio is upstairs and my office is downstairs. After the show with um, my guest, the doctor, the psychologist, um, before we got to my office, you know, she gave out her numbers, or a number, she gave out her number. Before we got down to her office, her phone was like a Christmas tree. I'm telling you, text messages coming in like crazy saying, I'm on the verge, I'm on the verge, I'm on the verge. I need help. That's how it is, and that's what the show is all about. Yeah, just to point you in the right direction. And we've got the right direction right here, thanks to Warif. Now, what do we have? Sexual violence, what is it? Gross violation of children's rights and, uh, that occurs in every country in the world. Now, according to um, UNICEF, in 2002, the World Health Organization actually estimated that globally at least 150 million girls and 73 million boys under 18 had experienced forced sexual intercourse, um, one form or the other, you know. And um, in several Caribbean countries, the first sexual experience of young girls is often forced. Studies have shown that it was uh, the case of 42.8% um, of girls below the age of 12. At this point, take it on. So we have similar studies yeah. that have been carried out here in Nigeria. Mm. We have a UNICEF study in mm -hmm. 2015 that tells us that one in four girls, by the time she reaches age 18, mm -hmm. would have had one sexual violent encounter. Mm. And approximately 70%... Keyword there being violent. Keyword being violent. Mm. And approximately 70% of them would have had more than one. And as we all know, age 18 is considered the legal age in mm. Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So these are all minors hmm. that we're talking about. Hmm. All right, so uh, crazy statistics there. Warif, Women at Risk International Foundation. You're a medical doctor. That's correct. And somehow you um, veered off into this. How and why? Well, my specialty, my background is obstetrics and gynecology. Mm -hmm. And so my target audience and patients are women. Hmm. And so when I moved back to Nigeria and started my practice, first in the public sector, mm. and then subsequently moving into the private sector, <coughs> it was a natural progression to mm -hmm. see women mm -hmm. that have experienced all types of medical conditions. Mm. And at this point in time, sexual encounters, including rape and other forms of sexual violence. Mm. And, um You've got some gory tales to tell about what you've seen so far. I was talking to a lady... Harrowing tales, awful encounters that these young women have been subjected to and are still being subjected to on a daily basis. You know, it's so sad that um, we, don't, we don't have, you know, the um, support system that allows a woman or a child to cry for help and genuinely helped or seen, um, taken to the authorities and all of that. Most times when people cry for help, it is seen as a private a family affair, domestic affair. Mm. In fact, that's if they cry. Most times the they're not allowed. majority of them don't cry. Mm. They there's, can't. There's they're a not stigma allowed. that's mm. associated with this type of um, encounter. Mm. Many families, typically the perpetrator 90% of the time is that family member, yeah. is that father, it is that said husband, that, yeah. that brother. Yeah. And so as you said, it becomes a family affair. Mm where it's the like concern shame. exactly is keeping it shame. quiet yeah. and neglecting the needs of that young child or that young woman mm. who has right now been told that don't talk about something that has been forced upon you and made to feel guilty as a result of that. So she's dealing with all this guilt and self-loathing, mm. not getting the necessary medical attention or mm -hmm. counseling that she so badly needs. needs. Yeah, because her psyche has been Absolutely. ruined. What do you make of this, Suley? No. <clears throat> I, I, think, I think we're in denial in Nigeria. We, we don't want to face the facts. Um, first, I think sexual violence is something that provokes shame. P 
people don't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. The reason why they don't talk about it is because they don't want they don't want to be stigmatized, and because abuse itself has a power play factor in it. Mm -hmm. People who abuse other people, threaten the victims or the end survivors mm -hmm. not to talk about it. And it's shameful. And I believe that we should try as a society to open up and really talk about this issue. I'm mm -hmm. very happy to be here to even talk about this issue mm. with um, mm. Dr. Kemi today. And I must add, Shoibo, I'm very happy that you use the word survivor yes. calling our conversation downstairs. Yes. Because uh, we don't use the word victim. Victims. So yes. We're all survivors. We're all survivors, at least after the... <laughs> yeah, after the, the craziness. Yeah. After the craziness. But, but more than anything, I think, let, let, let's talk about the church a little. I think the church has a lot of work to do. Um, the, the church needs to open up and talk about this issue openly. Uh, we can no longer be in denial. I mean, beyond the church, I mean, religious organizations, yes. I think even schools. Yes. I mean, yes. we, these are things that should be spoken openly. Look, Absolutely. even within family units. Even within family yes. units. Or a father should be able to call her, his, his kids and say, hey, look, this is A, this is B. Just say it as it is in the most educative and informative way. Yeah, Otherwise, so that would empower the child. Exactly, it empowers the child so that you, you, when you're hearing something contrary from the outside, you'll know. And you're you know, aware. So, so beyond the church, you know, um, or outside the church, it's it, it's 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 a cause for open conversation. I think some schools yeah. are trying. I mean, a few a few years ago, I attended a program organized by uh, the school that my children were going to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They invited uh, Dr. Namti Udukoya mm -hmm. uh, to come and speak to them. She has a book, "Do Not Touch Me There," mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah. teaching children early. Yeah. So how to say no to advances from adults or relations, uh, especially when it's related to uh, sexual. There is an infrastructure yes. in place, yes. mm. more so in Lagos than anywhere else. I like we what's do, happening in Lagos. We do have yeah. a lot going on in Lagos in this space, mm -hmm. both with the government as well as the private organizations. The police is involved. Exactly. Mm. The, the, presently in Lagos State, we have the Domestic and Sexual Violence Response Team a very active government arm mm -hmm. of the um, Lagos State, mm -hmm. and we are fortunate to be official members, Warif is, mm -hmm. of this team. And they do amazing work, wonderful work in not only addressing the needs of the survivor, but in following through with the perpetrator mm -hmm. from a legal and a judiciary standpoint. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, schools. Schools have a lot of programs, and I've spoken to quite a few churches. Many of them are acknowledging that you know there is a concern and there is a prevalent problem, not enough, but you know it's a working progress. Yeah. So we're seeing change, and that's what it's all about: putting a spotlight on this problem, so that we can first have conversations like this. Mm -hmm. We can start to talk about the problem. I'm we can encourage the survivors to come out, not be ashamed, carpet, like yeah. you said, Shwaibu, and then more so, then start to address the needs of these young girls and women. Mm -hmm. And that's what Warif does. That's why Warif is there. You share with us, if you may, um, some of the crazy stories you've had. Well, I mean, just so that it's we put it in perspective and context. So we're not just talking in the air and someone listening. Well, the youngest, the youngest case I've had is a two-year-old child, which is extremely tragic by any means. The most horrific thing you can think of that could happen to a two-year-old child. I've had. Um, a young girl as young as 11 years old who's pregnant because sadly she'd been raped by her father from the age of nine. We've had cases of the elderly that have been raped in awful situations. Many of these cases happen in safe havens or places where these vulnerable groups be. consider to be safe havens, mm. namely their homes, like yep. you said. Mm or schools, as we mentioned, and even churches. And so, um, and it's happening every day. The two-year-old survived? The two-year-old survived. Um, lots of complications, many of them long-term, so we have to wait to see. As they mature. Exactly. Now, you see, the reason why we're saying this, it's, it's, it's not just a, a woman problem. It's not just oh, no. a girl-child problem. It's not just a child. It's, 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 it's a an man everybody, problem. It's an it's everybody, everybody problem. It's everybody. It's everybody problem. is involved. It's a it's human a, problem because, exactly. you know, the man went there to do what he wasn't meant to do to who he wasn't meant to do it to. And so the future of that person is, 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 
is um, is is in danger. Mm. You know, the psyche, the the physical, um, uh, the physical, uh, whatever. It, it, it's all messed yeah, up. Yeah, the psychosocial, the emotional, the spiritual. Everything. Because, because rape is beyond just physical control. This is now rape of the mind. This is now rape of the spirit. And Ashwaibu used the term control. It's all about control. Sex is just the weapon that's being used. But control is that underlying, if you will. You know, I've always wondered why they why, do what they do. Exactly. Why would you do that? I, I think, I think it's an old age question. I mean, I, I have to refer to the Bible. I mean, if you check in Second Samuel, you will see um, what happened to King David. King David was not paying attention to his family. One of his sons, called Amnon, decided to rape his sister, called Tama. This is the sister of Absalom. So I think for men, men need to pay a lot of attention in their, in their homes. They, 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 act, they have to take an active role. Mm. By being separated from uh, chasing work, chasing money, running around, and not paying attention to family members, uh, could actually um, represent danger in their house. Mm. And I think because of this circle of abuse that we see, the chances that um, people even have been abused may end up also become abusers. And men, men are the major culprits. Men are the major culprits. This may be so, but I also think we have to take into consideration that we live in a patriarchal environment. That's right, yeah. And therefore, men are considered and feel that they're the more superior and stronger and more dominant gender. Mm. And women, less so. Mm. And so what tends to happen, especially when you take into context our particular cultural norms, mm -hmm. when we bring up our children, we bring up our children to believe that the boy child should be more superior than the girl child. Mm. The boy child is given, if you will, more freedom than the girl child. Yeah. And the yeah. boy child is allowed to get away with, if you will, you know, certain, you know, and in the, the boy home. Child. I mean, you're smiling, Shoibu, because you probably remember <laughs> your upbringing and the things you probably got away with that your sister wasn't allowed to. Mm. So this inequality starts then. And then you have that mindset forming. And so you wonder why later on in life, this inequality then translates to violence. Because this young boy genuinely believes that it's his right yeah. to take when he wants to, whether it's wrong. right or wrong, and it's Which absolutely wrong. wrong. Listen, um, we'll throw out the phone lines, and we'll go on a quick break shortly. And when we come back, um, just so you'll know ahead of time, the phone lines, you can call on the second half of the show. We've got the lines, right? and 0127739933. This is Nigeria <laughs> Info. We are listening. So put this in there, yes? All right, so you got the phone lines. Um, you know the lines to call, not now right away, but um, uh, shortly after the break. It's the men's room, Olimisi Adaba, alongside Dr. Kemi da Silva Ibru, alongside Suleiman Shaibu. And we're talking on um, sexual violence, um, safe haven that um, Dr. Shoy, uh, uh, <laughs> Dr. Shoy, you're getting to no, be a doctor. No, no, I'll soon be a doctor. <laughs> I, I intend to go and do a PhD, but more than anything, my son name is Shaibu. Okay. Many people prefer to call me Shaibu. I don't know. It must well, be a Yoruba thing. No, yes. it's, 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 well, actually, it has, OJ actually introduced you to me as Shaibu. There we go. No, my son name is Shaibu. S H A I B U. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, oh. It's a sweet name. It's just rolled like that. You know? <laughs> Go ahead, please. Anyway, um, one of the things that um, it's coming out of UNICEF says that children often don't tell, and most children are too ashamed or afraid to report incidents and do not disclose abuse to a parent or other adults. If they do confide in someone, it's usually a friend or a pair. And that's absolutely true. Mm. This we found at the War of Center, which is the rape crisis center in Yaga that we run. Um, a lot of times in this environment, children are not believed. Yeah. Adults don't listen to They just children. hush them up and stop when saying When children that? try that and from? tell you that that uncle tried to do something to me, you hush the child, mm. you tell the child to stop making up stories, mm -hmm. and you don't believe that child. So what does the child do? The child internalizes it. 
and then Which that is child, dangerous. exactly, yeah. is left to now hopefully have some sort of outlet in the mm -hmm. form of a friend, like it's stated in yeah. the text that you just read. Mm. The men's room is what we're on to right now. Um, Onimisi Adaba, alongside Dr. Kemi, um, Da Silva Ibru, and Suleiman Shaibu, or Shaibu Suleiman. <laughs> ah, you've got great names, I tell you. You two have great names, so you don't put me on the spot. <laughs> I'm just going to let that one uh, Man, <laughs> oh, just shut up. Anyway, so we're dealing with... Uh, Talking on some serious situations or serious issues plaguing us right now, our society, our homes, um, looking at domestic violence, child sexual abuse, and we're taking it off of um, the safe house called WARIF, Women at Risk International Foundation. The safe house open for, uh, to support survivors of rape and sexual abuse. It's all over the place. It could be you and you don't know where to go, or how to go, or what to do next. We'll reel out an address and we'll reel out the numbers where you can be heard and um, it'll be all right. Yeah? So, Shaibu, you were about to say something before we went on break. Oh, don't forget, you can call in. Um, feel free to call in and share your story or just say a thing or two. You want the number again? Yeah? No. <coughs> okay. All right. So, feel free to call in and uh, share your story, a thing or two, whatever, or preferably you just want to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show by all means. Just do as you please. So, like, we, um, you were about to say something? Yeah. So, I, I, wa I wanted to say that the reason why most parents or adults will try to shush a child mm -hmm. when they're trying to bring their attention to the abuse mm -hmm. or the attempt to abuse mm. is because most people in Nigeria are still in denial. Unfortunately, there are many homes that are an enabling environment mm. for this type of crime to carry on. We do have what we refer to as groomers, m men that groom children, mm. that prey on vulnerable children, that identify vulnerable children in a community. Yeah. And in an environment where you have, say, communal living, and you have relatives that live in the same home yeah. as these young children. If you have parents that are not neglectful per se, but busy with yeah. the you know with their lives and getting on with Jobs, providing career, basic you know exactly infrastructure and the needs of the family, it's very likely that you know these children are oftentimes left on their own. Okay. And That's this sets the term. I, I think nothing should ever excuse a person. Yeah. I mean, I, I understand the last two speakers are talking about the enabling environment, yeah. but what is wrong is wrong. No there is no excuse. Is <laughs> yes. And no there's another very important point that we must make here. Mm. What a woman wears, mm. how she looks, Good, what she smells like, yeah. how she walks, has absolutely nothing to do with encouraging any type of reaction mm. that's detrimental to herself. In fact, studies have shown statistically that rapists do not decide upon who they are going to rape based on what she's wearing. Mm. They don't look at the apparel of clothing and decide based on the length of her skirt. Mm. And so we need to move away from that type of thinking. It's control, I would say. It's, it's absolute self control. control. And it's, yeah. I mean, it's almost like saying that the average man has no self control. Mm. If you're saying that he reacts purely based on what is visual Instinct. in front of him. Mm. I, I, I mean, yeah, the guys are more visual. Us men, we're more visual. We uh, see, we're like, whoa. Well, yes, you see, but then that doesn't then, automatically mean you take what's not yours. Mm. Uh, okay, see, why not discounting the impact of um, looks and all these attending uh, external, uh, what call it, circumstances? I think we should focus on training our children early in life. Um, I think men are left um, to their own devices very early. Again, to, yes, to buttress your point, um, there's a whole lot of assumption that comes with bringing up a boy child. You know, it is assumed he knows, he's a boy, he's a man, he should know, but he doesn't. He needs some form of training. Absolutely. I mean, the young girl, I never cease to tell the story. Some young, a little girl, 11-year-old, who um, 
I went to buy a plantain the other day and she sold it to me. And, you know, I had to ask, how old are you? She says 11. And he told me a whole lot of things. Do you go to school? She says yes. And I'm like, this girl now is learning trade. She's learning bargaining. Because I tried buying it for 500, no, 400. She said five. She I said four. She said no. I, I, she got 500 and I'm like, that's bargaining. Coupled with the education she's getting in school. Mm. She turns out at 15, 16, she's already matured. She has, Absolutely. while the boy is left, uh, he's well, a boy, he knows that narrative, and all. that narrative, if he might be playing soccer. Somewhere. While she's busy yeah. selling this plantain. And she because was alone, the mother was in there. And, and some accountability, responsibility, ownership, bargaining, and all of that. <coughs> I saw all of that in the little girl, and I'm like, wow. I, I'm very, I'm very passionate about men issues. Mm. I think most of the problems of this world are caused by men, okay. and I think it's because early in life, men are not given the requisite training, mentoring, modeling that they require. They are left to their own devices to do whatever it is that they want. On assumption that yes, he knows. Let's he knows. Speak. If the mindset at that age, that vulnerable age, that adolescent age, where you, as you gentlemen, just very rightly stated men should be you know not necessarily trained but the upbringing should be that they are then taught what it is to have the right values mm. how it is to treat women women how it is to treat each other how it is to treat yourself how to it begin is with. to yes. treat themselves yeah. in terms of their self-respect and their self -worth. i think we should just start spending time with with, with the family generally. Mm. Yes, the quest for money, money making and all of that. Yes, the times are tough, the times are demanding, the times are hard, but what's the point in meeting up with the tough times and losing out on, on family on time? Family, family and we time. have to always be mindful that children are always watching. Oh, children yes, are indeed. always watching. Children that are always child watching. that watches his father hit his mother all his life, He's bound to grow up and wonder exactly what is right and wrong. Yep, I mean, some know. of the best chefs in the world are men. There yes. we go. I could pass for a that's, that's okay, good that's chef. I won't say the best chef. <laughs> that's what I'm advocating that. Good chef. Maybe not best. Michelin star. <laughs> a, good a good chef. Not even one? But, uh, come on. Give me, just give me a star. He's a star. <laughs> See, that's what I'm advocating that we should start early. If men need a lot of mentoring early in their lives. Mm -hmm. And the right and wrongs Fathers, it's their duty to teach their children so that they'll know what is we right. We shouldn't yes, be too busy. We, we should be too busy. Too this busy is our number one assignment. Time. Yeah. Yes. Let's pick one more. Oh, okay. Hello? Hello? Hi, how you guys are taught, you know, that in some cases the rod is not spared. You know, just whip you back in line and all of that. But and more often than not, that that's the minority. That's yes. it. That's so, you know, it would be nice if we could say, well, in an ideal world, this is the way that average boy mm. is brought up. But we all know that's not mm. true. Mm. Mm. Anyway. Um, you got a thought to share? Uh, no, I think I'll just keep on emphasizing um, what I started with today, which is men have a very big responsibility. Um, the way things are designed naturally, culturally, everything has conspired to say the man is the head of the family. So the box stops at the table of the man. The man needs to train his children. He needs to work with his wife to give correct values to his children. And not really yes. responsibility. Your children, your no. children. It, no, it's, I, it's, and I'm it's, sure it's, I'll, be, I'll be coming next week to talk to you about passivity in men. Yeah, I think this is an area which men need to work a lot about. Mm -hmm. They cannot just leave things how to take care of themselves. Somebody has to. Look, if you're going through a rough, tough time right now as a woman, as a child, and you really don't know what to do or where to go, you know, all kinds of crazy things going on, the punches are going on, the verbal abuse and the sexual abuse going on, there's a safe house. I'm telling you, we talked about Warif earlier on, Women at Risk International Foundation. I'll let you in on the number, and then um, the doctor here will let you in on uh, where you can go for the safe house. You can call this number 080. 921-0000, that's four zeros and nine, yeah? That's 080-921-0009. Got the number? One more time. Gosh, okay. 080-921-0009. Mm-hmm. That's where the call, it's, um, uh, she's going to reel out the, it's, it's actually a confidential line, so... 
what? It's a 24-hour it's a 24 hour confidential line. line. Yeah, so, so it's 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 not limited. 24 yep. hours. 24 hours. Imagine that. So that's where to go. That's where to call. That's the number to call. Do you want to tell us where they can go? Yes, the Warish Center is at number six, Turton Street, and that's off Thurban Avenue, which is behind Ozone Cinema in Yaba. Mm -hmm. I'll say that again. It's number six, Turton Street, off Thurban Avenue, behind the Ozone Cinema in Yaba. And as OJ just said, we have a 24-hour confidential helpline. The number is 0809. 210-0009. Again, 0809-210-0009. And we're on all the social media platforms.